Welcome to K. Keith Photographer's Digital Images Techniques and Tips for the Novice Photographer. And now, coming at you almost live from Kansas City, USA, here's your host, Ken Keith. Hi, and welcome back. A big hello to those of you in the local users group and those of you here in the U.S. and around the world who have been so kind to visit with us on Vimeo and YouTube. Well, if you've been following the last uh, few episodes, uh, we've talked uh, fairly extensively about high dynamic range imaging and the software uh, HDR Express. But um, I wanted to get with you and share some information in regard to uh, what I call pre-processing, the goal of which is to increase the quality of your final output image. I've done quite a bit of research, experimentation on my own, and I've come up with these things that I think are important. And you know, if you have a, a group of images that you've already done in HDR Express, uh, one of the other unified color products, Photomatics, or maybe uh, HDR in uh, CS5 or NIC software. Uh, you may would, would like to go back and try some of these things. And is it going to be a startling change? Probably not. But I believe it's worthwhile. It's uh, changed the way I've worked and I'd like to hear from you as to your result. All right. Now, although this is about primarily the pre-processing side, let's look at a few basics. Okay. As bad as we hate to drag around the tripods, it's very important to use one. And the first time you come back with a set of images that you've taken handheld and it's just a little off, here, uh, but it's something, uh, you know, a, a scene that's important or that you can't duplicate again, you're going to go, wow, I really wish I had taken that extra effort to use the tripod. So get a good one with a good uh, ball head, three way pan head, and that investment will probably last you a lifetime. You start out with a good one, there's probably not a whole lot of reason uh, to ever change it. Use a self timer or a remote release don't want to introduce any shake or vibration into the camera. If your camera is capable of shooting in RAW rather than JPEG, please do so and gather as much information as possible without uh, internal processing by the camera. Use the lowest ISO that you can set. Uh, by default my cameras are 200 but I can go down to 100 and I have noticed a quality change by going down to the 100 setting. Turn all your auto functions to off once you've critically focused, critically metered, go into manual mode, turn off all, all auto focus. If you're shooting in JPEG, it's important to, uh, if you, to turn these things off. Make sure you don't have any scene modes activated. I would turn off also auto white balance. Use a quality lens. This is um, uh, something of an axiom no matter what type of photography you're shooting. Um, you know, ones that uh, are highly corrected for chromatic aberration and distortion. Super sharp. You can uh, get reports on these, the technical aspects of them. What's a good lens? Like Popular Photography Magazine, DP Review also reviews lenses if you're going to make that change and keep that lens and your sensor clean. You don't want to introduce any garbage uh, into those captures uh, before you send them over into uh, the uh, to do your pre-processing or your output. All right. Now let's go on to the pre-processing aspect. All right, now I'm in uh, Lightroom. If you don't have Lightroom, you can do these things in Photoshop. I'm using CS5, and that's a, that's a good using the latest uh, iteration of Adobe Camera Raw. You can also do this in uh, Photoshop Elements. 
uh, if you have a version 9, which uh, I highly recommend, you can do a lot of this uh, in the Adobe Camera Raw converter. Within Elements, there's some things that you won't be able to do. Right. Lightroom is a, a very uh, helpful program in, in many aspects. I would highly recommend you getting that. Alright, so I've uh, chosen a bracket of three images here and I'm going to quote unquote pre-process. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, go to Tone Curves. The default is Medium Contrast. I'm going to set it to Linear. Moving down, I'm going to turn all sharpening off. Noise reduction color by default is a 25. I'm also going to set luminance up to that level also. And then I'm going to enable profile corrections for my lens. Choose the lens that uh, was used to, to make this capture. And that's going to take care of some distortion and chromatic aberration. That's a this is important. Now the tone curve part, the lens correction, is something that you will not be able to do inside Photoshop Elements. Uh, you can uh, go to an external program uh, for lens correction. If you don't have one of these, I would highly recommend DxO Optics. Right. Now since we want to apply these settings to uh, all three images, we need to activate Sync and make sure that uh, everything here is uh, correct. Uh, if you've uh, done something previously, you might want to uh, uncheck them and then recheck the things that we just uh, did and click Synchronize. And you see the little uh, adjustment icons here. They all have now the same adjustments. And then we're going to uh, go to File and export. I'm going to name it. I've got a folder on the desktop uh, that's just called 4HDR. City Skyline is the name for this and we're going to export this as 16-bit TIFF files and in the color space, the big color space which is native to Lightroom is Pro Photo RGB and now we're going to export them. Now th th all this is very important. All right, now once I have uh, done the merging and the tone mapping in the HDR software, I'm going to save the output once again as a 16-bit TIFF with Pro Photo RGB color space. I'm going to import it back into Lightroom, and uh, then I'm going to make my final adjustments. And uh, you know, just depending on what what you need, what you can do in here is that you can do quite a bit. You know, straightening, take care of some glitches up in the sky, you know, if you have some sensor dust, that sort of thing. Add a gradient, whatever you need to do. Uh, generally speaking, we'll bring up some clarity. And I will also go back into the tone curve now, if, if necessary, and uh, give it a little more contrast. And then, uh, once again, I'll check here in the detail area. I'm going to still leave sharpening off. I'm going to zoom in and look at my sky and see if I see any of the little speckles which we'd consider as luminous noise if I need to bring it up. Now you see this is very, very nice here. Uh, and uh, if you have any uh, really uh, underexposed areas, which you shouldn't, that have color noise, you can go ahead and take care of it there. And once this is um, complete, then we're going to send it to uh, Photoshop or to Elements for the final uh, post-processing. If you want to add effects, textures, whatever you want to do, uh, that is the point to do it. And then the, the final thing is sharpening. And we're going to do something uh, special for that. And well, let's talk about that right now. All right, here's another HDR got a really nice sky in this one, uh, no noise at all. And uh, as you can see over here, uh, I've opened this now for you in Photoshop Elements 9. Uh, it'll look, of course, about the same if you were to do this in CS5 or one of the other Photoshops. 
Uh, but I have a background layer. I duplicated the background layer, went up to filter, other, and high pass. And uh, in here, I changed the blend mode to overlay. You can either use overlay, hard light, sometimes vivid light. And then I added a layer mask. Uh, I went uh, down here uh, when I did my sharpening, yeah, uh, changed the blend mode, went here, held the Alt key, added a black layer mask here. And then what I wanted to do was to reveal the sharpened layer, but only uh, that which uh, did not uh, involve the sky. Uh, so I, uh, so went ahead and got uh, the brush tool, foreground color to white, light and load at 100%, and then I just painted on the mask, you should click on your mask there, painted the sharpness back in to all the areas uh, except for the sky. That way you don't introduce any more noise, the sky looks great and you are finished with your image. I hope you've learned something useful in this tutorial. Uh, be sure and uh, send me feedback as to uh, what you found on your own, what techniques were most helpful, or some of your own that weren't mentioned here. So get out there, keep shooting, and we'll talk again. Have a good week, Mel. Bye-bye.